Hey everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an overview of two new video cards from Gigabyte. They both feature NVIDIA's newest GPU. It's codenamed GM204. That's code for GeForce Maxwell 204. So these are the new 900 series Maxwell based cards. We've got the GeForce GTX 970 and the GeForce GTX 980 both right here. And these also feature Gigabyte's own Windforce cooler. Let's start off with a closer look at the retail box. This is a Gigabyte Gaming Series uh, card, so you'll notice the Gigabyte Gaming Eye that's located right there. Of course, it's a GeForce GTX 980. It has 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory and a few other things to note, like 600 watts of power dissipation, or 600 watts of heat dissipation, I should say, via the Windforce cooler that's integrated here. Uh, this is also a super overclocked version, which means it's using binned GPUs, and it comes uh, heavily overclocked straight from the manufacturer. Flex display to aid and support for multi-display configurations. And then we have uh, some NVIDIA stuff that you have access to, such as game streams, so you can stream your PC games to a compatible streaming device, such as an NVIDIA Shield or NVIDIA Shield tablet. Uh, GameWorks is the initiative that NVIDIA has been working directly with developers to enhance your gaming experience. G-Sync compatible, of course, if you have a G-Sync compatible monitor, you can use it to synchronize your video cards output with the uh, refresh rate of your monitor for much, much smoother smoother gaming to eliminate tearing and stuttering. And also Direct X12 compatible, once that starts becoming uh, available in games, you'll have support for that as well. Here on the back of the box, we have some more significant things to mention. Now this is the Windforce cooler, so there's some information on that over here on this side. It features triple fans, and then this being the GeForce GTX 980, this one features their triangle cool technology, which uses a very dense aluminum fin stack as well as directionality to direct the airflow over those fins and push the uh, hotter air away from the card to aid in cooling. Uh, this also is a C uh, super overclocked version, so we have the GPU gauntlet. Gigabyte's basically telling you that they bin the GPUs, they test them all, and only the best of the best get put in their super overclocked versions. That's to make sure that you can maintain a stable overclock direct from the manufacturer, but that should also mean that you can even overclock the card even further um, than the, once, once you get it out of the box if you're into overclocking. Flex display is just going to aid in your graphics card configuration uh, when you've connected it actually to the monitors. So they've separated the video outs on the back of the card and I'll show you guys that a bit more closely once we get it out of the box. Moving on to our GeForce GTX 970, this one uh, does also feature the Windforce cooler. However, it's not the exact same Windforce cooler as the 980. It's uh, significantly lighter, actually, when you compare the two cards side by side. Um, but that is not to say that the cooler is any slouch, but uh, let's start off with what's on the front of the box. Of course, same GTX 970, so it still uses the GM204 GPU. However, it's uh, a little bit cut down to provide you a different price point. Um, still get 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, though, and you still have, of course, uh, a bin GPU for super overclock potential. Uh, also the flex display, the Windforce cooler, which looks the same again, but just doesn't have quite as much actual metal built into it as the uh, 980. And of course you get all those G uh, NVIDIA technologies that I previously mentioned. Flipping around to the back of the box, uh, I can say that although you do not get the triangle cool uh, system that uh, we saw with the 980, you do have direct copper CPU, uh, direct copper heat pipe contact with the GPU, that's proven to be a very effective way of cooling down both CPUs and GPUs, uh, and it's going to do a great job here as well. Apart from that, you get very much the same uh, design as far as the shroud and the fans go. You get the same type of fans that were included with the 980, uh, just not, again, not quite as much metal built in there, and you uh, have the direct Heat, copper heat pipe contact instead of the triangle cool. You still have GPU gauntlet, so you're still getting a bin GPU, and you still have flex display, so I'll show you guys that a little bit closer as well. I did also, also want to point out while we're back here, both of these cards feature dual BIOSes, so you can set up a different V BIOS uh, for each card, so that will uh, help you if you, for instance, are going for overclocking and you need a backup BIOS, or if you want to set up each BIOS with a different setting, you can do that. Also, these cards fall into the ultra durable series, so they do meet the ultra durable stand standards from Gigabyte for uh, building, which they include for both their graphics cards as well as their motherboards. So now let's take a closer look at the GeForce GTX 980 Windforce Edition from Gigabyte. And uh, this card, I can tell you just by lifting it up here, is substantial. I have uh, checked out the reference design version of the 980, and this card is significantly heavier than that card, which tells me a few things. Well, I guess it primarily tells me that there's a lot more metal built into this card, and that is uh, very, mu very much thanks to that Windforce cooler with the Triangle Cool technology. Now, I'm not sure how closely you guys are going to be able to see this, but the fin stack that you see right beneath those fans up there, uh, it has a ridge that goes along the center right there, and then it's got gaps out along the side. So that's the Triangle Cool. Basically, it's going to push the air out that way and out that a ways, and it's going to eject it out the sides of the cards, since this does have an open shroud design. 
So uh, I would recommend if you have this in your case, make sure you have a, de have a decent amount of airflow going through there just to make sure you can dissipate the heat that's pushed off by the card. Apart from that, there is a really, really substantial copper uh, plate that's down at the base here that's uh, going right over the uh, GPU. Uh, it's also touching some of the other components. You can somewhat see the edge of it right there. There's also five copper heat pipes that uh, go down and make direct contact with that copper plate. Uh, and then those go out into the fin stacks on either side. The aluminum fin stacks themselves have an uneven design, so there's actually some that are higher and some that are lower as you go along each stack. And uh, Gigabyte has said that that increases the amount of turbulence going over those fins, which aids in heat dissipation. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the fans themselves also have a special design to them, and you'll note that there are three of them for one. They also have a, a special uh, sort of the blinginess, I guess, if, that, if I can use that word going on on the uh, blades. So they have a, a little triangle tip right here on the end, and that's gonna help direct the airflow over those little ridges. And then of course, it's gonna push that air down over those fin stacks to uh, help dissipate the heat. The shroud itself is made of metal, uh, which I like. That's a nice touch. I prefer metal uh, to plastic where available. And then apart from the shroud on top, you have a, a very nice looking uh, black base plate or, or back plate uh, as well. So uh, that's got some, uh, some gaps here to allow for some heat to dissipate. Uh, you can see the GPU is mounted right there at the center. You got a G1 gaming eye from Gigabyte right there as well. And then some, some sort of edgy designs going on along there, which is also pretty cool. That goes down to the end of the card here. And then it uh, kind of just bends up in a, a bit of a protective layer for where the termination ends of those copper heat, pipe, heat pipes are. Um, I also want to point out the Wind Force logo, which is right over on that side. Uh, it's right there at the center, and it does light up, and it glows blue. So um, that's a pretty cool effect, and if you have a side window on your case, you're going to get a really nice view of that. I also applaud Gigabyte for um, going away from the, the previous versions of the Wind Force cooler where they had that pointing straight up. They've bent it back, uh, which provides more clearance on the card itself for practical reasons, and it also gives you a better view of the Wind Force logo when it's all lit up for you when you actually have it installed in your case. So uh, kudos to Gigabyte for doing that. Um, now I want to point out some of the new technology that NVIDIA has uh, integrated with the 900 series. So you have something that you're going to be hearing about called uh, dynamic super resol resolution, which basically enhances the fidelity uh, of your 1080p, ten of your 1080p uh, resolution image on your screen. And it gives you something more akin to 4K image quality. So basically you can get 4K fidelity at 1080p displays for exceptional detail and Im Im image quality. That's according to NVIDIA. Uh, you also have something called voxel global illumination. Um, so this is something that NVIDIA has been working on uh, as part of their GameWorks initiative as they've been working with game developers. Uh, and this accelerates dynamic lighting effects uh, to give you a more cinematic experience. So anything in games that they can do to enhance lighting is always going to provide you a better experience. Um, and if they can do that without giving you much of a frame rate hit at the same time, well, that's, that's just an added bonus. Uh, let's go over some of the actual specs uh, for the GPU itself. Again, that's the GM204 is the code name of the GPU sitting in there for the GTX 980. Uh, it has 2,048 CUDA cores. Uh, and then the reference design has a base clock of 1,126 megahertz and a boost clock of 1,216. But since this is the super overclocked version from Gigabyte, uh, you get a base clock of 1,228 megahertz and a boost clock of 1,329, uh, which is a nice uh, more than 100 megahertz boost from the stock frequency, so that's pretty cool. Uh, your four gigabytes of GDDR5 memory is gonna be running along at seven thousand megahertz effective or seven gigahertz effective memory clock that's uh, on a 256 bit memory interface uh, and you get a total memory bandwidth of 224 gigabytes per second uh, apart from the new stuff I mentioned, such as dynamic super resolution, voxel global illumination, uh, you're also, of course, going to get support for all of the NVIDIA goodness you might have come to expect over the past few years. GeForce Experience, of course, NVIDIA Game Stream, Stream NVIDIA G-Sync, DirectX 12, GPU Boost 2.0, which is going to dynamically overclock your uh, GPU, and it will actually overclock it even beyond uh, what Gigabyte will tell you it runs at, depending, of course, uh, on the temperature in your case, because uh, it does help to keep the GPU cooler so it can overclock itself. Uh, and then you also have adaptive V-Sync, CUDA technology, um, all that good stuff. There are more on that list, but I must continue on. Uh, on the card itself, you have 
A couple SLI fingers right there, um, so you do have support for up to four-way SLI configurations with the 980. Uh, Gigabyte has beefed up the power delivery on this card, so you have two 8-pin PCI Express graphics connectors right there. Um, that is up from the two 6-pin that you will find on the reference version, and that's to deliver more power for overclocking. I do really like that Gigabyte has flipped these around and put the clasps uh, up on top rather than underneath. That's much, much easier if you've uh, done a lot of plugging and unplugging of PCI Express graphics connectors. Super, super helpful there. Uh, you, of course, still have PCI Express Gen 3 compatibility, so there's your PCI Express edge connector down there at the bottom, and that's where it, of course, interfaces with your motherboard. And then let's uh, talk a little bit about the video outs that are here on the back. You'll notice you have one more than uh, with the last generation, and uh, Gigabyte, again, has grouped these, so you'll see there's a little uh, grouping right here um, that's kind of traced out on the brackets. Uh, so your dual link DVI here and your display ports, you can use either use both display ports or the dual link DVI, and then you can use each of these connectors individually. So uh, overall though, you have a, a dual link DVI that's uh, digital only right here. You've got a dual link DVI that's DVI uh, I, so that's digital or analog. So if you're gonna use a DVI to VGA adapter, use it with this one, won't work with that one. Also down here along the bottom, uh, we have uh, display ports. So we have three of those that are display port 1.2 compatible. Those are the ones you're gonna wanna use if you have a G-Sync capable monitor. Uh, right now, all of those are display ports. So um, fortunately, you have three of those available. And then lastly, you have an HDMI. Uh, and then as far as resolution supported, you can do 4K on the display ports or the HDMI, although I generally recommend display port for 4K because you've got enhanced bandwidth there. And then your dual link DVIs can do 2560 by 1600. And now we move on to the GTX 970 from Gigabyte. Um, I think you guys might have noticed by now that I haven't shown you any of the accessories or box contents. That is because these cards came in so early, uh, actually, that there's nothing really inside the box besides the packing material and some padding and stuff. So you will get accessories if you purchase these cards at retail. However, I can't tell you exactly what those are because we don't have them right now, but I'm sure they're fantastic. Uh, but the, nine, uh, the 970 here, uh, again, features the same wind force cooler. So you notice the shroud up here is the same design. Uh, it is still metal. It still maintains the uh, glowing blue wind force logo that uh, will face towards your case window if, you've ha if you have one. It still features your three cooling fans right here with especially designed blades to help channel the airflow more efficiently down over the aluminum fin stack. Really the primary difference here when it comes to uh, comparing this one to the GTX 980 that I just showed you is the fin stacks themselves as well as the uh, configuration of the copper heat pipes down underneath there. So uh, you don't have the triangle cool technology here and uh, you do not have quite as many actual copper heat pipes. So you have four copper heat pipes here as opposed to the five that you get uh, with the 980. And uh, when they come down here, they're making direct heat pipe contact uh, with the GPU down there because you're also not having that uh, huge copper plate that was down there at the base of the 980. Now, uh, I, I know I've talked a lot about the, the weight difference between these cards, and I was talking to, uh, to Denise just a second ago here, and I, and I said, it's really not so much that this 970 is, is light, it's that the 980 is really heavy, so just to clarify that. But apart from that, uh, of course, you're going to get a lot of the same technologies and features that we already mentioned with the 980. So um, uh, GeForce Experience, MFAA, Dynamic Super re Resolution, Voxel Global Illumination, NVIDIA Game Stream, G-Sync, DirectX 12, NVIDIA GPU Boost 2.0, uh, Adaptive V-Sync, NVIDIA CUDA technology. It's all there. Really the primary difference here um, from card to card is going to be that cooler. Um, so this one is still going to do a really great job, just not quite as great as the 600 watts of heat dissipation that you get from the uh, the one in the 980, uh, but you still get the back plate here, and then the GPU itself in the 970, although it is still based on the GM204 from, uh, from NVIDIA, uh, it's got a fewer CUDA cores, so you have 1,664, uh, and then the base clock and boost clock on the reference 970 is 1050 and 1178 megahertz respectively. Uh, this, however, is also a super overclock version from Gigabyte, so you get a really nice uh, manufacturer overclock right out of the gate. Uh, the base clock on this one is 1178 as, co as compared to 1050. The boost clock is 1329 as compared to 1178. So again, over 100 megahertz uh, frequency increase straight from the manufacturer. And of course, you are free to overclock beyond that because these are binned GPUs so they should perform quite well as compared to a lot of the other uh, NVIDIA GM204 based graphics cards that are out there. 
You also notice uh, here for your power delivery, you have a six pin and an eight pin, which is still uh, up from the reference design for the 970, which uses two six pins. Uh, and then again, great job, uh, Gigabyte, by flipping those and making the class points on top. I really like that. Nice added touch. You still get the um, excellent back plate located here at the bottom. Again, design for that is really all the same. Uh, and then again, of course, PCI Express Gen 3 compatibility up there. Uh, two SLI fingers there. I can't uh, guarantee what SLI support you're going to get with the 970 because NVIDIA has been known to not give four-way compatibility all the way down the product line. This definitely is physically capable of four-way, but I'll say you're going to have at least three-way support um, for this one out of the gate and then possibly we'll, we'll see what NVIDIA decides to do as far as driver support for four-way on the 970. Honestly, four-way is, is really, really rare as a configuration anyway, and it's, it's really more of a I feel like it's more of a bragging rights than an actual practical GPU configuration. But anyway, I digress. Uh, let's talk about video outs here at the back. Again, uh, this is something that uh, Gigabyte has gone and, and changed from the reference design here. So you actually have uh, more video outs. So you have five here as, as compared to the four with the reference. Uh, but you do, again, have three DisplayPort 1.2 outputs, HDMI, as well as two dual-link DVI. So the same uh, uh, monitor configurations are going to be available with this one as you had available with the GTX 980. Uh, and then I did want to also mention that as far as the fin stacks here beneath the cooler go, um, you do have a substantial amount with a large one over here on this side, a smaller one down on this one, and then a uh, big uh, uh, aluminum fin stack that's down there uh, right above the GPU. Um, again, not the same uh, fin design as you get with the 980 on there, but um, I think for what you get here, it's still a very, very nice uh, card. And then apart from that, you're still going to get that glowing blue logo and uh, you're going to get all the aesthetic uh, similarities that you saw with the 980. Um, lastly, I did want to point out uh, the memory configuration on this one. Again, 4 gigabytes uh, is running at 7,000 megahertz or 7 uh, gigahertz effective memory speed. Uh, it's 256-bit interface, 224 gigabytes per second of total memory bandwidth. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. You can find links to both of these graphics cards in this video's description. While you're down there, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video, of course. And leave me a comment and let me know what you think of Gigabyte's specific design for the GTX 970 and 980. Do you think they hit one out of the park? You think you could use more work? Do you have any suggestions for them? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.